Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. For those of you who like horror and the macabre, I'm going to show you how to create this horror movie poster. I provided a PSD file so you can follow along. Its link is located in the video's description or project files. It includes this human skull, concrete texture, and movie poster credits. Hide the top two layers and make the concrete texture visible and active. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Levels. Make the input black 47 and the input white 209. Make the skull visible and active. Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. This will allow us to modify the skull non-destructively. Double-click the Smart Object to open its source. We'll separate the skull from the background by using the Magic Wand tool. Make the tolerance approximately 40 and make sure Contiguous is checked. Click anywhere outside the skull. This makes a selection around it. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut out the skull and copy it to its own layer. Hide the original layer. We'll use the cutout skull as a displacement map for the blood streaks that we'll be adding later. The displacement map will make the blood streaks look like it's wrapping itself around the contours of the skull. To make the skull into a displacement map, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Duplicate Layer. Click New and type in Displacement. Then click OK. Go to File and Save As. Save it to your desktop as a PSD file and click Save. When you see this window, click OK and then close the Displacement tab. Control click or command click the new layer icon to make a new layer below the active layer. Control click or command click on the cutout skull to make a selection of its shape. We'll fill the selection with black, but first, if your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is your foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Delete the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Make the top layer active and press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Levels. For the input black, type in 91. For the input midtones, type in 1.54 and for the input white type in 205. Let's restore back some detail from the top of the skull. To do this, make the top skull active and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to it. Click the skull under it to make it active and reduce its opacity to 60%. Click the layer mask to make it active. Open your gradient tool and make sure the linear gradient is active. Click the gradient bar to open the gradient editor. Click the foreground to transparent box and click OK. Go to the top of the skull and press and hold Shift as you drag the gradient line to the top of the eye sockets. Then, close the Smart Object tab. 
When you see this window, click Yes to save the changes. Change the Blend Mode to Overlay. Next, we'll create the blood streaks. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill it with white, and since white is the background color, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Click the foreground color, and in the hexadecimal field, type in 9B0202. Then, click OK or press Enter or Return. Now, your foreground color is the color you just typed in. Go to Filter, Render, and Fibers. Make the variance 5 and the strength 10. Then, click OK. Press Ctrl or Command L to open the Levels window. For the input white, type in 200 and click OK. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales 50, the displacement map stretch to fit, and the undefined areas repeat edge pixels. Then click OK. Click the displacement file that you saved earlier on your desktop and click Open. Notice immediately the blood streaks became distorted based on the displacement map created from the tonal values of the skull. Change the blend mode to linear burn. Next, we'll add a soft shadow. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. Press D on your keyboard to make the foreground and background colors default to black and white respectively. Open your elliptical marquee tool, go to the top left corner of your image, and drag out a selection to the bottom right corner. Go to Select and Transform Selection. Go near a corner and rotate it clockwise. Drag it to the left and press Enter or Return. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather it 200 pixels and click OK or press Enter or Return. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the selection with black. Then deselect it. Open your horizontal type tool and open your list of fonts. I'm using Abaddon 2 Regular. If you'd like to use it, I provided that link as well. For this font, I'll start with the size of approximately 100 points, sharp, and right alignment. Click the color box and pick white. Then click OK. Click on your document and type out your first two lines of text. To adjust the space between your lines of text, also known as Letting, highlight both lines and go to Window and Character. The Character panel will open. Drag the Letting icon to the left or right. Since it's easier to adjust the size of each word if there's a lot of space between them, temporarily make the Letting wide as in this example. Click to the right of your second word and continue to type out your text. To enlarge a word, highlight it and drag the size icon to the right. To make a line of text smaller, highlight the line and drag the size icon to the left. Continue to adjust the words until you're happy with their sizes. To close the space of the lines, highlight the second line and drag the letting icon to the left. Highlight the next line and drag it up. 
Continue to adjust your title until you're happy with its spacing. To reposition it and adjust its overall size, click your Move tool and open your Transform tool. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out or in. When you're happy with its size and position, press Enter or Return. We can close the character panel now. Convert your text into a smart object so we can change or edit the text to any point without having to redo the effects that we'll be adding to it. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. Make the bottom text active and go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Make the angle 90 degrees and the distance 200 pixels. Then click OK. Next, we'll add an ethereal glow to part of the text as well as a drop shadow to your entire title. To do this, shift click on the text copy to make it active as well, and then convert both layers into one smart object. Open your lasso tool and draw a selection around part of your title. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut the inside of the selection and copy it to its own layer. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 40 pixels and click OK. Make your title active and click the FX icon. Click Drop Shadow. Make the Blend Mode Color Burn, the Color Black, and the Opacity 70%. The Distance is 18 pixels, and the Size 7 pixels. Then click OK. Make the Credits layer visible and active, and change its Blend Mode to Screen. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.